Hi folks, let's walk through how we created the CAD and CAM model for to this week's Wednesday widget, uh, which is making the Fusion F uh, and SoftJaws. So let's start with the CAD side of the SoftJaws themselves. If you want to jump forward to the CAM, I'll post the time right here in the video to skip ahead to. So the Fusion F is this guy right here, the Fusion Keychain, and everybody has this. If you go over to your data panel, scroll all the way down, under workshop and events, contests, here's the Fusion F. So I'm gonna save as so I can work on it on my own. Hop back into model, and I'm gonna put the Fusion F into a component. So right click on the body and say create components from bodies. So I'm gonna call this Fusion Keychain, awesome. Let's create our soft jaws. Right click on the very top of your file structure here and say new component, slow double click or left click to rename them to soft jaws. See how it's already activated, that's perfect. I'm gonna hit R for rectangle and let's see here. It's interesting, the plane, if you take a look, that's odd. The plane, the natural uh, coordinate system plane is kind of in the middle of the part. So we'll go ahead and create them right here on the bottom plane of the F. I'm gonna just create one box and two box. I'm not worrying about dimensions or anything so far. D for dimension, let's call this one inch. Click, instead of typing anything in here, see I've got the dimension up in blue. It's ready to be typed in. I'm gonna come over here and click this one inch and see how it says D20. That formulaically links them, which is awesome. And they're four inches long. So I want to center the F over these soft jaws. So let's think about how to do that. I'm gonna hit L for line. And if I see how I get a point snapping to right here on the end, or pretty close, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna go all the way over here. And I just create a line across that F. I'm gonna click on it once and hit X, which is gonna to toggle it between normal and construction. See how it's now a dashed line? I'm gonna go sketch point. I'm gonna put a point uh, you got to be careful here. You don't. I want to put the point where it's not going to have any constraints. So see how like here, there's nothing really um, linking. If I put it here, it would link it to that line. Or if I did it, you know, here, it's going to link its link to that other intersection. So just over here. Now, I'll click midpoint, and I'll first click the blue, the black dot, and then I'll click this construction line. That locks that point right in the middle of this F left to right. So now what I can do is hit D for dimension and put a dimension between these two of say 0, .0 actually I'll just type it in 1 16th. I think that's how I'm going to space these the soft draws apart. Actually that's how we did it in the video. I, I know. I'll click this link again so I'm formulaically doing this. So there's now 1 8th of an inch between these two. The F is off to one extreme of the soft jaw, as you can see here. It's over on the side, so let's do D here to here of, say, well, I don't really know, one. Oops, okay, so that's good. Um, I want to lock this soft jaw in place. So let's click on it and just click Fix, Unfix. That should lock this into place. So now when I hit D, click this line in that center dot. Actually, I actually already have that dimension right here. Let's just say one. Hmm, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Click that line. Uh, click these two, type fix. There we go. That one went green, which is good. So now, um, it might be, oh, you know what? I might have to do it this way. 
uh, let's undo that Be, uh, because the component and this is projected from another component so I may need to move my soft jaws to fit it actually sorry I hadn't thought about that so right now I can move this one I, that's okay I just want this one to move with it so I will say collinear this and this that locks those together so when I move them now perfect D for dimension click this click that and we'll say one not enough 1.5 perfect works for me E for extrude and click these two and we'll extrude actually I'll click everything this time because we're going to extrude down a one inch and then I'm going to go back and expand the soft jaws right here on the left of your screen expand the sketches I'm going to turn that sketch back on and I'm going to hide my fusion keychain by clicking the light bulb because I don't want to see it right now I want to just see that sketch so now I'm going to hit E for extrude and now I'm going to click here and here it's actually odd that I didn't see more of the sketch I'm not sure why but now I can type in um, see how the arrow here is pointed down that means I'm going to type a negative number to go up so negative 0.2 is going to push this up that's actually way too much negative 0.125 and see how the operation is joined. That's really important because when we're done and we click OK, I want this all to be one solid um, piece here. This and this, at least to each be respectively solid pieces. I don't want the um, I don't want there to be a split line here and have the extrude. I'll just show you if, if I had, if I had done new body. What you would see here is you've got kind of two different piece here, piece here, piece here, piece here. That's not what I want. Cool. So turn our Fusion F back on and take a look. Looks good. So we've got some problems though, which is can't have these sharp corners. So C for circle, click right here. And the easy way to do this is just right here, 0.125. And if I double click that right now, see how it pops up if I hover over D31. So that was my eighth inch dimension so next time I could do this I can just drag out and type D31 C for circle same thing drag out D31 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 oops D31 and D31 E for extrude one two three four five six negative point two or something doesn't really matter and now I just made a set of soft jaws or the CAD or at least for them if I go back up here and click uh, the activate the parent component I can see everything and that'll work just fine um, two more housekeeping type things I like to do I don't want this undercut right here because that's going to mean when I try to open the jaw it's going to potentially depending on the relief of that might might be okay given that these are all tapered but I still don't want that and I want to fill it over here so I'll turn my fusion keychain visibility off again activate my soft chalk component if you're new to fusion that's one of the biggest things you've got to kind of get used to is paying attention and activating the component that you're working in fill it if you don't have fill it up here it'll be modify fill it and I'll click one two was it just those two I think so um, honestly I usually like to fill it most of my leading edges because there's so much locating geometry on these soft jaws um, that you don't need to have sharp corners at all it doesn't just doesn't overkill I find you make better soft jaws this way because if you take a look now sure we've got some relief around these edges and that's totally fine again plenty good job so that's how we create the cat side let's walk through the cam to machine the actual soft jaws we did a spot on all of our holes we did a drill with a 1 8 inch twist drill that's our Mickey Mouse or dog bone corners a adaptive with a quarter inch end mill and then 
we used a 3D adaptive as well here with a 1 8 inch end mill. And even though 2D adaptive would work to, to finish this up with the smaller tool, we used 3D adaptive because on the geometry tab, the second tab, there's an option called rest machining. And what that does is it looks at the operations that were done by the quarter inch tool here, the prior operation, and it it's able to see what wasn't machining or rest machining, machine the remaining stock. That's what rest stands for remaining stock, apparently. I always thought it was machine the rest of the part. And it goes in there and does these little whisper cuts around there with the smaller tool. Awesome. A quick 2D contour to clean all that up. And then finally, we do really just an edge break chamfer. Uh, we're not talking about all the feeds and speeds because you can download this file yourself uh, with the link in the video description. We normally do that for folks that back the channel on Patreon, but we're making this one available to anybody. To machine the Fusion uh, F, we start with the back side. So I'll activate this setup. So again, the thing I thought that was cool about this is we're taking this to Las Vegas. So we're, uh, and we're going to be hosting a training class for folks that have probably never used a CNC machine before. So I want to stack the deck in our favor. And it's a two-op part. They'll stick the part in the raw material on the left side blank right here and cut it. And then they'll flip it over to here where they'll machine the F. But I wanted the same work coordinate system. So if you notice, the back left of this jaw, the fixed jaw in this case, remains my X, Y, Z, zero, which means we don't need to do another edge finding operation. Really nice, really helpful. So the, for the first operation, you'll notice that it doesn't look right, but reality, the front jaw here is the movable jaw. So it'll just get backed up to fit the stock in that you see in the shaded uh, rectangular cube. And that's fine. Your locating geometry here is this back face here and the side face right here. So pretty simple. Face it off, do a 2D adaptive around. Let me turn the uh, back side on here so you can see what it'll look like. So this will look like the final part. 2D adaptive around it to hog out the material. We're being pretty conservative here uh, because we don't have any sort of coolant or air blast on these machines at the trade show. 2D contour to clean it up. A drill to dr poke through that hole and then it's a 3 16 mil drill so we're actually going to come back through it and plunge all the way down and do a really small, let's see if I can zoom in and see that. Yeah, you can see the little loop here. Interpolation to widen that pocket out to the specified diameter. I think it's 0.2 inches. Yeah, 0.2. Then a quick chamfer, and we're going to engrave. In this case, we're going to engrave the NYC CNC logo on it. Of the customer, students will do their own name. So take a quick look at that simulation. deck it off, do a 2D adaptive. And when I'm simulating, I like to watch it for a second and then I now know that the, you know, the step over, the step down on that tool is fine. So see how it's the black bar is moving along this green band here? I can just click at the end of the green operation. It'll basically, it'll jump me forward to the next op here, which is the 2D contour cleanup. Skip ahead a little, drill through, pecking it. Do the interpolated hole, chamfer, and finally engrave. So the engraving looks big. That's because we're actually using a spring-loaded tool, so it won't actually go as deep as the cam thinks it's going. So when we're done, we've got that footprint done, which means they can flip it over, stick it in this pocket here. We do a 3D adaptive. Great tool path. You can see it's going to use a quarter inch end mill to rough out most of that three shape, 3D shape. We'll do a horizontal to clean up the flat area over the key ring. Then we do another 3D adaptive and we do it here with the 3 16 ball end mill. This is the tool we're going to use in the next operation to surface the part and create really cool three dimensional profile of that topography on that part. I'm doing an adaptive first because there's a lot of areas that this big or relatively big quarter inch tool can't get into because it's both a square shouldered tool and it's a larger diameter. And when I do the finishing op, 
I want to do a couple things. I want to go as fast as I can. I also don't want to run that tool into a bunch of material that was left over from my roughing uh, adaptive. So what I do is I create another adaptive for the 316 ball end mill. I can run it at a slower feed and speed than I'm going to run my surfacing operation uh, next and I can use rest machining. So it's going to uh, uh, look at that part and see what's left to be done, but we're still leaving uh, five thousandths radial and axial. So there's a little bit of material left to take off, which we're handling here in the parallel operation. This looks really cool. All that we really did under the fourth tab passes, we changed our pass direction to 45 degrees, which makes it cut at an angle. And then if you add perpendicular passes, I'll turn it off for a second so you can see it. So it gives us at 45 degrees angle the step overs. What's awesome again is you go back and under passes add perpendicular passes and it gives us that cross hatching. It's really cool. You'll notice too by the way that I've got all these uh, cam operations protected. You say right click and say protect. That's because, and I've never seen this before uh, in Fusion, but for some reason in this file, when I toggle the visibility of the various parts on and off, it's forcing me to regen, which was annoying and frustrating. So just locked them for now. And then finally, we just do two quick chamfers to clean them up, and that's it. So again, you can click here for a card to see and watch us machine these, and we'll be off in Vegas next week. Uh, if, you wanna, if you're attending AU, you can sign up for this class via the link below. I don't control who gets in, and I suspect it'll sell out. Uh, and the link below is not actually to sign up. It's just to add your name to the list. So sorry that I don't have more information on that. Uh, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed something. Hope you learned. Take care. See you soon.